Depression is a mood disorder characterized by sadness, loss of interest in daily activities, suicidal feelings, etc. Different people experience differ- depression in different ways. It may interfere with daily work, resulting in lower productivity, influence relationships with friends and family, and some other chronic health conditions. In order to understand the cause of depression, different theories or hypotheses have been put forward. First is the amine hypothesis of depression put forward in 1960. It actually revolves around the fact that decrease in the levels or functions of monoamines such as serotonin, norepinephrine, dopamine, etc. in cortical and limbic systems of the brain cause depression. A second cause that is thought to play its role in depression is a decrease in brain-derived neurotrophic factor which actually forms a protein called brain-derived neurotrophic protein which promotes survival of nerve cells that is neurons by playing a role in the growth, maturation and maintenance of these cells. Abnormalities in hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, thyroid function and sex steroid levels are also thought to have uh, played its role in depression pathophysiology. Now the drugs that we use for depression the goal behind them is to basically increase the level of these monoamines such as serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine in the synapses between the neurons in the brain. Now when we think about it, we can actually increase the levels of these monoamines in the uh, synapses by three ways. First, we can inhibit their reuptake by reuptake mechanisms. Secondly, we can inhibit the autoreceptors that are responsible for Uh, carrying out the negative feedback and thus inhibiting their release and thirdly we can uh, inhibit the enzymes that are responsible for their metabolism. First we'll see the reuptake inhibitors. First are TCAs, tricyclic antidepressants. Second are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Third are serotonin noradrenaline reuptake inhibitors and lastly noradrenaline dopamine reuptake inhibitors. The tricyclic antidepressants can be simply remembered by the simple mnemonic anti-dep-c. A for amitriptyline, N for nortriptyline, T for trimipramine, I for imipramine, D for doxepin, E is for nothing, and B is for protriptyline, and lastly clomipramine. Out of all of these, amitriptyline and imipramine have long-acting active metabolites. Now the mechanism of all TCAs is to decrease the reuptake transport of both serotonin and noradrenaline and thus increase their levels in the synapses. The mechanism of action and adverse effects will be described simultaneously. First, as I said, they will block norepinephrine reuptake. So the side effect in this case can be adrenergic overstimulation. The second action was to block serotonin reuptake and this can cause serotonin syndrome. Serotonin syndrome occurs when tricyclic antidepressants are used with SSRIs or MAO inhibitors leading to increased serotonin uh, levels in the synapses and leading to severe symptoms like sweating, rigidity, myoclonus, hyperthermia, instability, rigidity and seizures etc. Now apart from these two actions that is inhibited norepinephrine reuptake and inhibited serotonin reuptake they have three unwanted uh, actions that produce side effects that are undesirable. First is alpha 1 adrenergic blockade that is this is alpha 1 not alpha 2 I wrote, I wrote it wrong here and second is H1 blockade and thirdly M blockade. The alpha 1 adrenergic blockade will cause vasodilation and thus postural hypertension leading to reflex tachycardias and even cardiac arrhythmias. The H1 blockade will cause sedation of course and the muscarinic blockade will cause uh, atropine like side effects and also uh, sedation. These drugs also lower the seizure threshold and may precipitate seizures or convulsions. Coming to the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors they can be remembered by the mnemonic FCPS. F stands for fluoxetine, C for citalopram, P for paroxetine, and S for sertraline. Their mechanism of action is evident by their name, that is, they will selectively block the reuptake of serotonin. Unlike TCAs, 
they have no uh, muscarinic blockade no h1 blockade and no alpha blockade so all those side effects are not there they do not cause weight gain unlike other antidepressants and they do not precipitate convulsions they do however cause insomnia and importance among all of the ssris fluoxetine has active metabolites and thus a longer action now one side effect is bruxism that is grinding of the teeth this is associated with any drug that increases serotonin coming to the serotonin noradrenaline reuptake inhibitors they include venlafaxine and duloxetine i don't know why i didn't write them i was sleeping i guess the mechanism of action is clear they will inhibit both serotonin and noradrenaline reuptake they have no side effects like the the ones anticholinergic sedation weight gain etc and they do not precipitate seizures next we have ndris that inhibit reuptake of both dopamine and noradrenaline into the neuron and the drug included is bupropion it is used in smoking cessation and it will not have all the side effects associated with muscarinic histaminic and alpha 1 blockade but it do causes uh, can precipitate seizures coming to the class of uh, antidepressants that actually increase the release of uh, neurotransmitters by blocking the autoreceptors they include trazodone mianserin and mirtazapine trazodone acts mainly by blocking 5ht2 receptors that are autoreceptors for serotonin release and thus increase serotonin release they also block 5ht reuptake and also they have alpha 1 adrenergic receptor blockade activity so due to this blockade it will cause hypotension and priapism next mianserin is going to increase nor adrenaline release by actually inhibiting alpha 2 receptors remember all of these drugs that are precipitating seizures that's because they are increasing uh, synaptic levels of neurotransmitters that is they are providing a pathway for seizure to propagate Mianserin will also cause seizures by increasing noradrenaline release by uh, blocking alpha 2 receptors. Lastly, mirtazapine act by blocking alpha 2 receptors, autoreceptors, increasing noradrenaline release, and also 5-HT2 receptors on the neurons, increasing serotonin release. They also have an action of on blocking H1 receptors and thus cause sedation. They also cause weight gain, like the TCAs. coming to the last group of drugs that act on the enzymes that are responsible for the metabolism of these monoamines they are divided into selective and non-selective the selective ones have only uh, maoa blocking activity while the non-selective one have both maoa and maob enzyme uh, inhibiting activity just for a recap mao inhibitors are mitochondrial enzymes that are involved in the metabolism of biogenic amines Now there are two forms MAOA that is mainly responsible for norepinephrine serotonin and tyramine metabolism while MAOB which is responsible for dopamine metabolism so these selective enzyme inhibitors will act on MAOA enzyme and not on MAOB while the non selective will act on both the MAOA and MAOB uh, enzymes Now important concept to study before seeing the selective and non-selective MAO inhibitors is the cheese reaction. Now normally when we take food such as cheese and fermented food what happens is that the tyramine present in the food is metabolized by the MAO present in the gut and the liver. So very little of the tyramine will reach the general circulation and that is good because tyramine is actually a releaser of catecholamines that are stored previously. So in cases where a patient is taking antidepressants such as MAO inhibitors and simultaneously takes food that are rich in tyramine what happens is that uh, the MAO are inhibited right so tyramine uh, large amounts of tyramine will enter the general circulation and release large amounts of uh, catecholamines and thus um, cause a hypertensive crisis and cerebrovascular accidents this cheese reaction or hypertensive crisis that is associated with high blood pressure of course can be treated with iv fentolamine now fentolamine we know is an alpha blocker so it will dilate the vessels and result in hypotension this cheese reaction can also occur 
with MAO inhibitors and amphetamines, which are seen as stimulants and act by increase, increasing uh, norepinephrine and dopamine in the brain, and also with ephedrines, which are sympathomimetics, and also indirectly increase norepinephrine release. Coming back to the enzyme inhibitors, the selective MAO inhibitor is moclobamide, which is free of drug-food interaction, and it also does not cause the cheese reaction. The reason for that is it is actually a reversible inhibitor of MAOA uh, enzyme. So when there is increased tyramine concentration, this will activate the enzyme and thus tyramine will be metabolized. Lastly, the non-selective MAOA and MAOB inhibitor will be phenylzepine and it will be associated with the cheese reaction. All of these drugs can be used to treat depression, anxiety, OCDs and ADHDs. That's all about antidepressants.